welcome to part two of our afternoon, or whatever time it might be when you're viewing this. I would now like to introduce one of the main concepts of our, of our event today, and that is the theme of self-care. In searching for information on this topic, from a faith-based perspective, I found a number of helpful resources. The best one from which I will be drawing our information, or some of our information, is a book called It's Okay to Start With You. And it's written by an author named Julia Marie Hogan and published by our Sunday Visitor. The author is a licensed counselor, and she writes from a Christian Catholic perspective. It is well worth a read. We will just be touching on a few key concepts from this book and from other references during this event. There's a lot more information out there, and in fact, in Hogan's book, there's a whole uh, chapter or two on developing a self-care plan for yourself, just if you would like to do that for further reference or activity. The concept of self-care needs to be carefully designed for our purposes. Self-care is not selfishness, it's not self-absorption. It is, per Hogan, quote, a disciplined way of life that lays the groundwork for everything else, from your work to your relationships. Starting with our own well-being gives us the roadmap to become our best selves. When we aren't our best selves, it shows. When we're exhausted or overwhelmed, we simply can't be the friend, family member, significant other, co-worker, boss that we want to be. Nourishing our own well-being frees us to be the best self for others in the specific way that God has called us to be. A couple scriptures kind of help emphasize this point. Matthew 22, 39 says, Remember, love your neighbor as yourself. And Matthew 5, 13 says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its taste, how can saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but it's thrown out and trampled underfoot. So in both of these quotes, we first see that if we are to love our neighbor as ourselves, we must need to love ourselves first. And in talking about salt, we see that because salt keeps its flavor for a long time, it has become a symbol of endurance, especially in the ancient world. Salt remains useful only as long as its qualities remain. So if salt loses its flavor, it's of no value. So in looking at ourselves, we want to ask, how do we stay in for the long haul? How do we stay, stay quote, salty? To answer this, we are now going to look at each part of ourselves, body, mind, and spirit, and focus on how we might think about and address our well-being of these areas. We will use a planting activity as a means to illustrate and emphasize this. As we proceed through the steps of planting a succulent, which is contained in your kit, we will highlight how each part correlates to self-care. We will read related scripture. We will offer some wisdom from resources and from women's study. And we will offer some practical strategies related to each area of self-care. Just for your information, there is a list of most of the scriptures referenced in this event in your folder. There's, that's also along with a list of the women we have studied over the past year. Now Terry is going to give us some instructions for getting started on the planting project. In your kit, you should have your succulent plant, a clay pot, a bag of soil, and you'll need to provide some water in your cup. For the first part, we represent the clay pot. You will need to put it on a tray of some sort or paper plate. It does have a drainage hole in the bottom, which is necessary. So the body is represented by the clay pot, and this is our vessel. Um, all of ours are different, but they do need to be strong and supportive. There are a lot of references in scripture to the body. I'm going to start with Psalm 139, verses 13 to 14. For it was you who formed my inward parts, and you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. 
Wonderful are your works, that I know well. And from Proverbs 3, 7 to 8, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be a healing for your flesh and refreshment for your body. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Physical health is an area that has received much attention in recent years. We hear much about the benefits of living a healthy lifestyle. It is important to recognize that care for our bodies is an important part of health and well-being and that it influences all other areas of our function and health. This is a quote from Hogan's book. Neglecting our physical well-being has a ripple effect on our whole life, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, and even spiritually. Being kind to your body is in your best interest. It is an investment in your health. 